Body, the body is trainable, so you see technique limitations and all this stuff, this can be overcome, but with proper practice, but actually body is trainable, the mind also is also trainable, but powerful playing comes only by flowing and by absorption into music, and then therefore, this, and now people will say, yeah, I know that, no, how good are you at it? <laughs> this is the question. All these series, in every of these videos, what I'm talking, try to think, not I know that, but how good are you at it? This is the challenge. And that is because, uh, the training, that's one thing, but powerful playing comes by absorption. When you, when you absorb, really focus into music, and nothing matters but just that, what you are doing. You have to do one thing at a time, and therefore there is a a special training to get there. It's not so cheap as, yeah, I know it. Because if you knew it, you will play better now. And then only, so, uh, some students can tell me, if I ask you, how did you play scales last month and how you play now? Show me. My students have a video, how they played the listed video of the homework, at such and such a speed, this is scale, and this month, such and such a speed, this, this scale. So then, therefore, this is proof. Otherwise, it's just bluff or just a mental imagination to, you know, people live in, 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 in the non-reality of what they imagine they are getting in guitar. But if you actually we play for a hobby, because we, want to, we love it, we want to play it great, as best as you can. That's why you do for a hobby, because you, you want to enjoy it, right? So then, therefore, you compete with yourself last month, last day, last week. If there is not anyone who is, uh, people watching this now, and you think about you, you don't have to write anything in the comments, because people are very shy to say these things. I don't want to say, write in the comment section, because people will not do it. Why? Because people is very, actually they are ashamed to, to these things. I know it, I have no problem, I understand it, it also happened to me. Well, the question is, how many of you play same? than last month, or not better, or even worse, rhythm or technique, let's say. How better you are now in rhythm or in technique, really objectively, that you can prove, like what I, what I said, that you record a video and prove it. This is me last month, this is me now. How many of you can do it? Not many. And then, of course, people will, most of the people who are sincere, will notice that, wow, man, I really I, I am not, I am going down, actually. <laughs> I am not improving. In, in music, or in technique, or in rhythm. And then once you realize that and said, no problem, I will get there. I will process this information and do actually the proper study program as it has to be with the proper supervision and I could get there. This is a proper attitude. But that requires four balls, square ones, to do it. And, and as far as this doesn't happen, this body is trainable and the mind so doesn't mean anything because you have, you have the powerful playing comes by the flow of this absorption, which is the result of being interested in, in practice and, of course, on, of knowing what practice is and, and actually doing it, not just knowing theoretically, but actually doing it. And then, once you do that, this is the learning process in flamenco, in modern flamenco guitar. That's how you get really to higher levels of playing. Otherwise, this is not happening by imagining I'm okay or, or yeah, I got it. Because people listened, this, of course they will not say, yeah, I feel like playing uh, 
I am playing worse this, this year than last year, but this is the reality. And when they come here, not of everyone, of course, but I help many students like that. They come or go in the sky and tell me this thing, will come here to Spain and say, no, well, man, I'm this pity. I have been 10 years playing or five years. I am the same like at the beginning. I'm, I'm not, I feel, yeah, I feel a little different. Like I play one piece more, I think, but I really know inside that I am not advancing. I want to, to get rid of these obstacles and I want to progress in music. Right? And then I have to say only. <laughs> because this, 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 you need some balls to do it. To cut this imagined self idea that I'm great, I'm actually, yeah, I got it. That's why these, these series are very hard because it's about the learning process. But the learning process is realized, it's not just talk about. We have to actually do it, and when we have to actually do it, then the thing comes. That's why, that's why I always thank my Bill McBurney for teaching me that in theory there is no difference between practice and theory, but in practice there is. Yeah, you know, okay, I'm going to go to the improvisation. The improvisation is something that I think that every musician should do. A músico del estilo que sea, del clásico, del flamenco, de cualquier otra música debería, debería aprender porque en la improvisación te da mucha libertad y a la vez te da mucho conocimiento de, de dónde estás tocando, de cómo estás tocando, de qué armonías están en cada momento. ¿no? Muy bien, Pablo, sí. Paco, ¿qué es para usted la música popular y qué es la música elitista? Yo creo que la música elitista es el refinamiento de la música popular. Por ejemplo, el flamenco. El flamenco originalmente es una música popular, la música del pueblo andalucía. Pero creo que ya no le pertenece más al pueblo, porque de pronto habemos gente que nos hemos pasado toda una vida encerrados puliendo esa expresión popular. Entonces ha llegado a un nivel en el que el, que el pueblo ya no, no, no tiene acceso, sobre todo a los matices que vamos consiguiendo la gente como yo, que nos pasamos muchas horas eh, elaborando esa música. 